your tracks now He's the only member of the murderous Ripper crew to step foot out of prison. Just weeks into his new freedom, Cocorales agreed to talk to me. No topic, off limits. Everybody thinks I'm a, I'm a monster. Convicted killer, sex offender, Thomas Cocorales, linked to one of the most terrifying times in Chicago. They don't want to see me out there on the streets, period. As members of the notorious Ripper crew, Cocorales, his brother Andrew, Robin Gett, and Edward Spritzer are believed to have murdered up to 20 women. Their hunting grounds, the city and suburbs in the early 80s. There were three children walking down by the riverside. They found the body. Driving a red van, they grabbed victims right off the roads, some in the middle of the day. Families were paralyzed with fear, hoping their loved ones wouldn't be next. They were attacked and mutilated. The details are horrifying. Torture and lasting for hours. They cut off the women's breasts to perform a satanic communion. 
As police found body after body across the Chicago area, they noticed those same distinct wounds. The crew's deadly grip on Chicago lasted two years before they were caught. They have been cooperating to a degree. Cocorales confessed and eventually cut a deal, pleading guilty to only one murder, Lorraine Ann Borowski. Her family called her Lori, 21 years old and snatched out of her shoes. Cocorales got 70 years in prison, but under old Illinois sentencing guidelines known as day for day, he was allowed to serve just half for good behavior. His brother was the last man to be executed in Illinois. The other two will likely never leave prison, but Cocorales is now out and telling a shockingly different version of events. I was stuck doing the time for something I didn't do. Lorraine's murder, all of the other women that you were accused of being involved with their murders, you were not involved, that's what you're saying? Yes. The fact that these women were mutilated and tortured as some sort of ritual, is that true? No. There were allegations that there was cannibalism. That true? No. Did you have any knowledge of that happening? Like I said, no. Rape and torture. You have any involvement in that? No, ma'am. I looked in your eyes, I'm telling you, the honest God's truth, no. I have no participation, no knowledge. I have no participation in none of these crimes, none. None. Cocorales says he confessed to police because he was on drugs and officers fed him information about the crimes. The prosecutor said that you knew details that only someone would know if they had been there. No, what they told me. Like a dumb fool, I repeated right back to him. So you feel you were coerced into saying Yes. That. He even says he has an alibi for Lori's murder. He was with his father visiting his mother's grave. Cocorales says he only pleaded guilty because his lawyer pressured him. He's a monster. We showed Mark Borowski, Lori's brother, these new declarations of innocence. None of his crimes, none. Seriously? That's, he had no idea, he wasn't involved. I don't believe that for a minute. Mark was just 14 when his sister was murdered, but he easily remembers the last time he saw her. I said, I could walk you to work, you know, make sure you're okay. And she says, no, everything's fine. Within hours, the Ripper crew kidnapped Lori in Elmhurst. Mark, his family and friends passed out flyers for months before the heartbreaking discovery in a cemetery. They actually found her skeleton. My mom and dad um, had to go. They had to go identify the jewelry. And that's how they knew it was her. Cocorales' guilty plea brought a little closure for Lori's family, but his release from prison reopens deep wounds. The hurt, the heartache. They should ship him off to Siberia. Cocorales wanted to live with his brother, but the landlord refused. He had nowhere else to go, so he ended up at Wayside Cross Ministries in Aurora, sparking protests from residents and a rebuke by the city's mayor. I have absolutely no regret for uh, that decision in taking him in, uh, but I do understand their concerns. Wayside's executive director, James Luco, says the recovery program is exactly what Cocorales needs. People who come through the program like ours, the chances are much lower for them to get back to prison. I love this place. I love the people in this place. They love me. Cocorales follows a tight schedule, up at 4 a.m. to work. There's daily chapel, Bible classes, meetings with a mentor. I'm much calmer now. I'm nicer, not mean. I just have a bad attitude. Getting through all phases of the program could take up to 24 months. But Cocorales seems to refuse to take one of the first and most important steps. For Thomas to successfully get through this program and graduate, do you think that at some point there needs to be an admission of guilt. If he was truly guilty of the crime that he was sentenced for, yes. Can you see why people have a hard time believing 
that you had nothing to do with these crimes? Yes and no. He's not offering much of an apology to Lori's family either. If I don't want to talk to him. You it's don't just, want to talk to him. No, the, there's nothing that you want to say to that family. No, I just, I just want to say that I'm, I feel, I feel for him. I feel sorry for him. He doesn't want to see us, and thank God, I don't want to see him. Mark can't imagine a path to redemption for the man who confessed 36 years ago on tape to murdering his sister, and is now taking it all back. Mark is shackled to his worst nightmare for everyone in the Chicago area. My biggest fear is that he reoffends. And you think that's likely? Oh yeah, 100%. The guy's heartless, has no soul. But Cocorales says everyone must face his new reality. They want to see me back behind the bars, permanently. But they got to deal with it, I'm out.